Hi folks, it's uh, me again. Um, just I want to share just a short word with you today. I trust that your Sunday has uh, started well and uh, you're enjoying God's richest blessings in your life. Um, and, and if you're going through uh, difficult times, you know, it's good to know that he is there with you. He is alongside you. Um, sometimes we don't uh, recognize that. Sometimes we get carried up, tied up and and uh, that's just part of life, isn't it? And, uh, and sometimes we just need that reminder that God is there um, for us to turn to, for us to cling to. Um, <clears throat> I'm reminded of that old hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. You know that, that the story behind that, the guy that wrote that lost everything, everything, his business, his home, his, uh, um, his children uh, were, were drowned on a, a, tragically and um, he, he got a telegram from his wife uh, from Paris to say um, uh, alone survived. Uh, so he lost absolutely everything. Yet he was able to realise that it is well with my soul because he has put his faith and his trust in the Lord Jesus. So I trust this morning that you can uh, say along with the hymn writer, it is well with my soul. And uh, I want to encourage you with, with just some, some short, a short few thoughts from uh, some scripture in, uh, from Ephesians. If you'd like to turn with me to Ephesians and chapter 2. I think I'm going to read... I'm going to read all of it actually so from verse 1 to verse 22 I might stop a bit along the way here we go as for you you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air the spirit is now who is now at work in those who are disobedient all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace that you have been saved. <clears throat> And uh, verse six, and God raised up, raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So we are created, we are, uh, Paul is explaining that we are new creations, as we are saved by grace, saved by our faith, in the Lord Jesus Christ to be the once and for all payment for the the the, the sin and the transgressions of each of us. You know, <clears throat> none of us, uh, you or me, uh, were good enough, and there was nothing that we could do that would be good enough to restore our relationship with God. That relationship was broken at the fall of man with Adam and Eve and it just got worse. It just compounded uh, with um, wrongdoing after wrongdoing as, as, as time, as generations, as years, as hundreds of years, thousands of years flowed on. It, the, the gap between us and God just got greater 
and greater. And we read all through Scripture and all, well, all through the Old Testament, the way that God has tried to bridge that gap, tried to call his people back, tried to restore that relationship with him. I spoke about this last week a little bit. And, you know, I talked about us being sons and heirs to the kingdom. We are sons and joint heirs with Christ that he has called us. He has called you and me sons and daughters of the living God. And that's how he, he, he restored that relationship with him. God is holy. God is alone. God alone is righteous. And so by grace, we can come into that righteousness by faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that he was the payment for our sin and our wrongdoing. I'm not a good person. You know that about me and I, am, I know that you're not good people. By, by nature, we're not good. We, 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 we prefer ourselves. But God chose to uh, bring uh, one who would uh, share a message that talks of us putting others first. Loving others as we love ourselves. Loving God as we ought to. So, you know, of our own, of our own doing. And that's where he says, um, um, uh, this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, not by works so that no one can boast. Because if we did it, we'd be saying, aren't we good? I've kept, you know, and that's, we read that throughout the Old Testament, throughout the Old Testament, to a people in the New Testament that the, the, this was written for at the time, the, the Jews of the time, uh, who were saying, aren't I good? I obey all the laws of Moses and I pay my tithe and I serve at temple and I do, I fulfill all the obligations uh, of the of temple and we go and we bring our offering and all of that sort of stuff and and actually God says well that that's not it really that's not it at all you know that's the stuff you can do aren't you being boastful saying you know saying well I go you know I go to church every Sunday and I you know I sing heartily and I say amen at the right moments um, sometimes at the wrong moments <laughs> you know aren't I good that's really boastful isn't it you know if we have any kind of pride in our position any kind of pride at all then we do wrong we're not we're not understanding we're not understanding what God expects from us just to give ourselves over to him and to it and to just acknowledge that Jesus Christ who is the head of the church will do and have his way with us in whatever we do and whatever our endeavors are if we are in him if we are his and what uh, if you don't know what that means then I I'll ask you to please be in touch with us please come along to to Bethel and and give us an opportunity to speak to you about it but but it, and if you do then you understand this this idea we uh, who we are in him we, we, we're servants we're, we're soldiers uh, we're vessels we're instruments to be used by him and, and we cannot boast in anything that we have done, whether we've built up a great big church of thousands, whether we have a ministry that is all over the world. Um, we cannot boast in that because it is only him that allows it and him that can take it away as well. Um, it's verse 10. We are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Our good works are for our neighbours. Uh, for others, for the community, for a hurting world that needs this message of salvation. And it is only by grace, it is only by the undeserved favour of God that we have that opportunity, that we can come to him through his son, Jesus. Verse 11. Formerly remember, oh, sorry, therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, 
which is done in the body by human hands. So Paul's referring back to, you know, it's nothing that we can do that can make us righteous. So he's pointing out that regardless of circumcision, regardless of obedience of uh, uh, the commandments, um, it, it's not about that. It says, you who are, who are called uncircumcised, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Because we, that brings us to God. Christ's blood, you know, we, we, when, we, when we take communion, wherever, wherever it is we take communion, and, and look, we can take communion at home, we can take communion on the beach, we can take communion on the bus, it doesn't matter where we do it. If we're doing it in remembrance of Christ's sacrificial death on the cross, right, when we do that, we are recognising that that blood that was spilt, that the wine talks of, that blood is what brings us near to God that's the only thing not our good deeds not who we are in church not what we can give to God not however much money we can tithe not however much time we can give but but it's just grace it's just that undeserved favor of God it is just that Jesus died for you and for me equally equally we have an equal share Verse 14, for he himself is our peace, who has made the two groups one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations. The two groups that he's talking about here is the Jews and the Gentiles. Um, and those who were religious and those who were, uh, weren't, who were secular, who had nothing to do with um, uh, God. And God and, and Jesus brought that barrier down and he brought those two together and he makes them one uh, to be able to attain to holiness and righteousness. Not through what we do, keep saying that, but through what he did. And it's important, it's important. And I think even as Christians, and whether you've been a Christian for 50 or 60 years, it, you know, it's important to remember. It's important to come back to. It's nothing we have done you know i know christians who have been you know i know i've got friends dear friends who have been christians for 70 years or more and they are no more saved than you or i they are no more saved than the person that is saved this morning you know that 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 that, that scale of time has no recognition with god it, you know it's so important to recognize that it is only god it's only through jesus christ that he has brought us uh, he has brought us in um, reconcile both of those uh, <clears throat> to God through the cross thus making um, creating himself one new okay by setting aside in his flesh the law with its commands and regulations interesting we've been looking in our Bible study about from Matthew 5 17 I have come not to abolish the law but to fulfill it and it here it is so guys if you've been watching if you've been part of that uh, our Bible study here it is again um, you know, Jesus set aside the, the law uh, and commandments and the regulations. He set that aside when he died on the cross. And he says in John, you know, it, uh, it is finished. That was it. He finished it. He completed it. I have fulfilled the law, um, and Jesus says. Um, uh, it's, it's crazy to make. Uh, let me just see. Uh, his purpose... Um, so verse 15, the second half, his purpose was to create in himself one new humanity out of the two, thus making peace and in one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away and peace to those who were near for through him we both have access to the father by one spirit. So Paul's just stressing that again, you know, we that's how we get to God through through him and through his uh, sacrifice on that cross that was a, a gift of grace towards us a gift of, a gift of mercy towards you and me uh, a love gift and, and and just to stress this you know the, the, the there was those that were 
supposedly fulfilled, you know, supposedly righteous through the law. Well, they're no longer righteous through the law, but righteous through salvation in Jesus Christ. For good, Jesus said, um, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, th you know there's no ambiguity there. It's not some. I'll let some come. To the, you know, some of them get no one. From when Jesus hung on that cross and died and was raised raised again on the third day and that tomb was empty, no one from there comes to God except except through him, except through that grace gift. Uh, so we have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you, uh, verse 19 Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. That's the important thing. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, but Christ Jesus is the corner. It's all dependent. It's all secured in that. What is it um, Jesus said uh, to Peter? Um, who do you say I am? You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. And when Jesus said, um, uh, "This has not been revealed to you by flesh, but by uh, my Father in, in heaven," and I tell you the truth, um, it's, I tell you the truth. Upon this rock, Peter, I will build my church. Upon the rock of that truth, that Jesus is the Son of God. Therefore, He is He is indeed God, uh, and He is God incarnate. Um, on that rock, that foundation, I will build my church. And um, so regardless of all of the prophets and all of the apostles, the rock, the truth, the, uh, the foundation of our salvation is in the fact that Jesus Christ was in fact God. It goes on to say, uh, so let me, I'll repeat that. I'm sorry, I keep interrupting. Uh, verse 20 built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone in him the whole building verse 21 in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord and in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit God inhabits you and me by his spirit we are the church you know just we, we you know we've said that a lot especially over lockdown when the church was closed and all of that you know that we were saying the church isn't closed the building is closed and we are the church and we we just have to take hold of this and understand this that god lives in us and through us by his spirit the things that we do the things that we say governed um, uh, um, by almighty god and the holy spirit and, uh, I, you know, just uh, as we think about and I think maybe I will we'll go on and I'll talk a bit more about about um, the gifts of the spirit and being full of the spirit, maybe a bit later, another time. But, um, you know, the, the, the spirit of God that is in you, the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the from the dead is in you and me. It's in us. It's in us. And we can do all things. Through Christ who set us free, through Christ who redeemed us, through Christ who uh, his mercy, his undeserved favour poured out for us at Calvary. Bless you guys. I look forward to being together, for us all being together again very soon. Um, and uh, the, the, church is, the church is open, Bethel's open, our normal Sunday service uh, at 11 o'clock. Uh, please feel free to come along we've got uh, all sorts of um, uh, um, guide we've followed the guidelines we're, 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 we're staying as safe trying to keep you as safe as we possibly can um, and uh, but we want to uh, we want to be together again don't we uh, so bless you guys uh, I'm just going to pray and then we'll close and uh, trust that maybe you've got your emblems uh, ready for taking communion well you know Please, uh, please go ahead and do that directly after this. And I'm just going to pray. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity of speaking to people this morning, or this afternoon, or this evening, whenever this is being watched. And I pray, Lord, you are outside of time, you are outside of space, you are Almighty God, who holds all of creation in your hand. You know the end from the beginning, you know where we are found today. 
And I pray for those watching that are not in you, that, Lord God, they might open their hearts to you. And I pray that they might call out to you. And I pray for those that are, I pray for our congregation, I pray for others that might be watching. Lord God, pour your spirit out upon them. Pour your spirit out upon them right now. Would you touch each one, Lord God? Would you, uh, would you minister into their lives, into their circumstances and situations, into their families, into their home? In Jesus' name, I pray peace upon them. Almighty God, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless you guys. Speak to you very soon. Bye now.